Hello everyone, this is Vikram and welcome to my channel DevOps Made Easy. So in this video we will see what is YAML configuration language and why it is so important if you are into DevOps. So almost all the DevOps tools that we come across uh, that we use every day like Ansible, Docker Compose, Kubernetes uses YAML as the configuration language. So in this video we will see how to write efficient YAML files, how to read them using some of the programming language like Python and uh, we will see what are the different data types supported in yaml and many more so without further ado let's get started so these are the contents that are going to be covered in this video so we are going to start off with a uh, basic yaml syntax then we'll see what are the different data types supported in yaml like integers boolean arrays dictionaries null set strings etc we'll also see how to write multi-line strings in yaml then we'll move on to learning about anchors and extensions in YAML and why these are used. Then we'll see what are placeholders and uh, why these are necessary for templating YAML files uh, in tools like Helm charts. Then we'll see some of the examples from Docker Compose and uh, Kubernetes manifest files. Then we'll see how to read the, these YAML files and how to write them using Python language. And uh, for this, we'll use PyAML as the Python library or the module. Then we'll also see some of the basic Python scripts for YAML. So shown here are the some of the uh, configurations file for the Docker Compose, Kubernetes Manifest and the Ansible playbooks. If you see, uh, we write the complete Docker Compose file in YAML, starting with the version, which is nothing but the key and the value indicates the actual version. Then the whole YAML file is a set of key value pairs. So the, the left ones are the keys and the right ones are the values. So in this lecture, uh, we'll see what are the different uh, values supported, the scalars, the dictionaries, the strings, uh, the list, etc. So the Docker Compose, the, the Docker Compose shown here is for Gitya, which is a Git server. Uh, we could uh, see the version, the, the total services. Uh, there are two services. One is the server and one is the database required for Gitya. And then the networks and the volume sections. So if you are familiar with the Docker Compose, uh, this should make some sense. Then moving on to the Kubernetes, uh, we mention every manifest file in uh, Kubernetes manifest file in YAML. So the shown here is the YAML file, the YAML file for the config map. And here, uh, this is the actual uh, the data that we are uh, providing as a config map. And this symbol over here represents a multi-line string. So we are going to learn everything in the uh, coming lectures, uh, I mean, in the coming slides. And the last one is Ansible playbook. Uh, almost all Ansible playbook starts with a list. So we'll see how to write uh, list and how hyphen is used for indicating a list element in the coming slides. So what is YAML? So YAML stands for YAML Ain't Markup Language. So it is a data serialization language just like JSON and XML, but uh, this is not a substitute. Although in most of the DevOps tools, we use YAML as a serialization language and sometimes JSON. So it is very hard. I mean, it is very rare uh, finding XML as a configuration language uh, in the latest DevOps tools. So YAML is simple. It is text-based human readable language that is used to exchange data between people and the computers. So it is uh, basically it is a configuration language that uh, we provide it to some of the DevOps tools. And it works perfectly with all the programming languages like Python, Go, JavaScript, Java, etc. Okay, so every programming language that we come across understands and that means the reads and writes YAML files. So the main advantage of using YAML files is its readability and writability. So uh, using YAMLs, it is very easy to read the configuration and it is very uh, easy to write the configuration as well when compared to JSON and XML, which are uh, a bit difficult. And uh, YAML is not a programming language like Go, Python, etc. It is not a programming language. It is a simple uh, configuration language. So it is mostly used for providing configuration files for all the DevOps tools. And it is very easier for humans to read and uh, for the programs to process because almost all the programming languages that we uh, come across uh, has libraries for YAML. So it is very easy for all the programming languages to read and write YAML files and also to serialize uh, or parse the YAML files. Another benefit of using YAML is its support for various data types. Uh, so in the coming uh, sections, we'll see what are the data types supported uh, by YAML, like uh, lists, arrays, dictionaries, uh, integers, strings, etc. 
and the file type uh, the file extension for yaml is either .yaml or .yml it is entirely our choice so what is data serialization so we have been saying that yaml is for a data serialization so data serialization is nothing but a process of converting a data to a format that could be easily stored or sent over the network so this is uh, called data serialization it is a uh, kind of converting one form of the data to the another form so that it is it can be easily stored or sent over the network so the the process is known as serialization and the reverse process that is the stored format uh, i mean reading the stored format is nothing but deserialization so for example you could use python to serialize the data and uh, sent over the network and the other side a javascript program can read that uh, serialized data and can deserialize it so the whole process it's the reverse of the first process that means the, the initially the serialization process takes place and the other end deserialization process takes place so once you serialize them either you can store them or you can share them over a uh, network so that the other uh, side can read it let's say that uh, on the uh, input side we are using python to serialize the data on the other side uh, we can either use python go J javascript to deserialize to deserialize the data and the read the actual yaml data okay so this whole process the first process is known as serialization the the next process is known as deserialization coming to the yaml structure everything in in yaml is a key value pair so if you see the uh, yaml example over here this complete a uh, file is a yaml document so and the, every line indicates a key value pair so the name here indicates a key followed by co colon and then we have to give a small space over here and the next thing is a value so we will see what are the various values supported like the integers list dictionaries etc okay so we have to remember here uh, is that everything in in yaml is a key value pair okay and these key value pairs basically are the building blocks of whole yaml and every item is a member of at least one dictionary so i mean to say let's say here if you take strawberry uh, it is a value so this value is a part of at least one dictionary so strawberry is a part of this dictionary so we'll see what is a dictionary it is again a set of key value pairs so if food is a key the corresponding values are these so it is a list so the reason why i mentioned this as a list because each element ha is having a hyphen okay so you'll understand it in the coming slides so but understand here is that every item is a part of at least one dictionary and yaml doesn't support use of tab characters here so for uh, mentioning the values for the foods key okay i have given some spaces but here instead of spaces you cannot use tabs because tabs have no meaning in yaml so yaml doesn't support use of tab characters instead you have to use spaces so these spaces have to be uh, you know equal throughout the yaml file let's say if you are using one space it is completely fine uh, and then you have to stick to using only one space for mentioning this whole list so let's say that you are using two spaces for mentioning the apple value and one space for orange it doesn't work like that okay and then the keys are always strings so here the keys are always strings indicates so the yellow ones marked here are the keys so the keys are always strings and values can be anything like the values can be a boolean it can be a string it can be a list or it can be a whole multi line string it can be anything so we'll see them one by one with the examples so this is the yaml structure again so the file starts with three dashes okay so this is optional it uh, doesn't have to start with three do uh, three dashes but uh, this is the convention okay every yaml document starts with three dashes okay and the white spaces is a part of yaml formatting okay so here i have uh, used two white spaces okay so this is a part of yaml formatting and new lines indicates the end of a field so that means that here is working as a is working is a key and the true is a value so the next line indicates the end of this field over here so new lines uh, mark the end of the previous field and the white spaces are a part of yaml formatting and indentation level can be one or more spaces and is used for nesting of key value pairs so indentation level can be one or more spaces that we uh, talked about let's say work experience here it is a key okay and what is the value 
so everything that is indented till this part then this whole part is indented so this complete indented path part becomes value for this key okay so this complete part part here again it is a dictionary because it has key value pairs okay so company 1 is a key and these are values company 2 is a key and these are values so for work experience this complete part becomes a value and inside this value again we have key value pairs so that indicates a nesting of key value pairs coming to the json structure let's say if you have to compare between yaml and json it is very easy so yaml uses new lines and indentations okay for uh, writing the yaml document but json uses the brackets and braces okay so let's compare both okay so let's say that uh, three uh, uh, lines over here indicates the start of the document here the braces okay indicate start and end of the json document so this is the yaml file and this is the json file okay so this braces over here mark the complete json file and here name is the key martin is the value so here the same can be mentioned here okay so the name it is a string so it has to be mentioned in double quotes so one thing you have to remember in json is you should not mention anything in the single quotes everything has to be in the double quotes that means the keys as well as the strings okay here name is a key so it has to be put in the double quotes followed by the colon and then the actual value again it is a string so here name is the key and martin is the value so the name is the key over here and martin is the value so here there is no need of using commas to mark the end of that field so the new line indicates the start of the new field but here comma indicates the start of the new field okay so here job developer the same thing we mentioned skills elite employee true foods over here okay so this is a key so again foods it is being mentioned as the key over here but for mentioning the list because this hyphen indicates the list so for foods as the key apple orange strawberry mango becomes a list of values okay so here the list should be indicated with square brackets okay so here we are using hyphens to indicate the list elements the same thing have to use with the square brackets so inside the square brackets you can have individual elements followed by the comma to indicates the end of that field okay so the last element of that list should not have the comma okay and the languages here it's it's the key and again this complete parts become its value so the languages became the key here and then if you see clearly over here this complete part which we are saying as, as the value to this languages key so again it is a dictionary because it has again a key and a value key and a value key and a value so we know that the keys by key value pairs are nothing but the dictionary okay these dictionary should be mentioned in between the braces that's why we have uh, this complete value indicated as the dictionary over here okay so dictionary key value comma key value comma key value so the last element should not have comma and they, again the last element uh, the education is the key and the value is a multi line string so how did i know that it is a multi line string using the pipe symbol so the pipe symbol indicates the multi line uh, string uh, again we are going to learn it in the coming sections so here if you see education as the key and the value is a complete string object so this is the difference between json and uh, yaml the same thing can be mentioned in the xml but here in the xml we use so called tags okay so the start and end of the document is sh shown uh, with the data tag okay and the root indicates the the document root starting tag and the ending tag and then the same thing okay so the name martin is indicated with the name tag and the closing of the name tag and again foods here it is a key and the value is a list so similar thing foods okay so all the elements of foods okay again language here it is indicates a key and the value is a dictionary again languages are mentioned under the 
list or uh, uh, the dictionary over here so it is it should be mentioned like this and again education is a string so the education um, sorry this is uh, an extra part over here so this is the education tag and inside it it is a string so this is how we you convert uh, yaml to xml so you don't have to convert it manually so we have uh, multiple online tools for converting this so i, I have here the complete uh, list of uh, resources given in the form of yaml files and json files i even i have the python examples for passing the json and the yaml files and also uh, all the data types that we are going to see uh, in this yaml tutorial is also given as a single file including the basic data types and i also have uh, a example helm chart and uh, an example docker compose file and uh, multi container pod manifest file for the kubernetes okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a simple yaml file uh, from this all data types file and i'm going to show you how do we convert them into an json file or an xml file online so i can just take this uh, yaml file over here then i'll uh, go to uh, any of the browsers and then i'll search for yaml to json online so if you type for yaml to json online there will be plenty of sites available so i can select an um, yaml file and then i can just give yaml as an input and then i'll get the relevant json output after conversion okay the same thing i can do uh, instead of yaml to json i can just go for yaml to xml online so and again i'll uh, select any uh, random site then i'll paste my yaml site uh, as the input yaml uh, file as the input and then i get the xml output for that yaml file so this is how uh, we can use online tools for converting uh, one uh, configuration language to the other configuration language so coming to the other resources in this section i have python files for reading the json files uh, uh, and the yaml files as well shown here is the difference between yaml json and xml structure for a simple dictionary over here okay so we have user details as the key over here and the value it is a simple dictionary again the same thing is mentioned in the json file over here so the user details becomes a key and uh, this complete part uh, becomes the dictionary for json the same thing is for the xml so the user details becomes the tag and here inside it it is again a dictionary and now uh, the important uh, thing to understand here is the difference between json and a python dictionary okay so even this is an important interview question uh, because both json and uh, and python dictionary looks almost the same in terms of the structure so what is the difference between json and a python dictionary so json is nothing but a data format of type string okay while python dictionary is a data structure okay so this is the difference okay so if you need to exchange data between two different systems of the process or let's say if if you want to uh, exchange some data between two different uh, microservices or something so we could serialize a python dictionary that becomes a json object so that's why the uh, python dictionary it is a data structure once you serialize a dictionary it becomes a json object of type string so we even we can prove this Uh, programmatically for this i have an example program uh, written in python so uh, i'll be using a dictionary as an input okay so i'll be importing the json library and then i have here employee 1 as a dictionary and the values are uh, name job skill and whether he is employed or not as a complete dictionary then what i'll do is uh, before serializing this dictionary i'll uh see the type of this employee one object so using a type function and i'll pass the employee one uh, variable name to this type function and that will show me the class as dictionary then i'll serialize it using json so inside json dumps is the uh, function that converts or that takes in a dictionary and it will serialize that into a json object so the uh, what i'm doing is i'm using the json library and inside that library i'm using the dumps function and i'll uh, pass the employee 
name or uh, this complete dictionary as an input then what i'll do i'll print it and i'll also see the type of that json object so the type will uh, should be a string okay so this indicates that the python dictionaries are uh, uh, you know data structures of uh, type dict but the json object sorry the uh, the serialized python dictionary is nothing but a json object of type string okay so that is the difference so we'll go back to the uh, the programs okay so i have here a python json program file okay where i'm importing the json library and then i have here a python dictionary of uh, uh, yeah so this is a python dictionary and then what i'm doing is i'm just uh, printing the type of that dictionary and then i'll use json dot uh, jump dumps function to serialize this python dictionary into a json object and then i'll print the type of that json object so what i'll do is and simply i'll click on this play button over here okay and then it will automatically run my python file so here the first print statement which is nothing but uh, printing the type of this employee 01 it indicates that it is a dictionary so this is obvious because this complete thing is a python dictionary and then once you serialize this python dictionary it becomes a json object and the type of that json object is a string so even uh, you can see it from the uh, terminal output it is a class string Okay. so this is the difference between json and a python dictionary yeah then we'll see uh, uh, what is py yaml module for reading the yaml files in python okay so before going to see what are the different data types and how to understand them so we'll uh, run or uh, we'll practice all these data types in python so py yaml is such uh, uh, one such module available for python uh, for reading the yaml files so py yaml is a yaml pa yaml parser for python okay and using the py yaml module we can perform various uh, operations like reading and writing complex yaml files and we can also serialize the yaml files serializing here indicates converting uh, the yaml objects uh, uh, or the python objects into yaml streams Okay. We can also also convert the YAML file into a Python dictionary. So all these operations can be done using PyYAML. Okay. So installation uh, PyYAML is available in uh, py py dot uh, org. So you, you can easily install it using the pip utility. Okay. So pip is a Python installer. So pip install PyYAML will indicate uh, sorry will install your uh, PyYAML module for Python. So now here uh, using py yaml module we can read the yaml files using the load all function. So we have load and load all function. So let's say you only want to read one yaml document. You, you would use load as the uh, function call. But since uh, every yaml files will have multiple yaml documents mentioned inside it. So we'll be using load all function that reads all the yaml files mentioned in the a single yaml file so we'll see what are uh, how can we mention uh, multiple yaml files in a single yaml document so in uh, there we'll see how to use load all function to read that multiple yaml files okay then this function parse and uh, yeah so this load all function what it will do is it will parse and converts an yaml object into a python dictionary so this is again an important uh, thing to remember so it will parse your yaml object into a python dictionary since uh, uh, after reading uh, this yaml object uh, we get a python dictionary so we can use the items function call to separate uh, key value key values in your yaml file because uh, items function can be called upon a python dictionary so once we have a yaml object read as python dictionary we can simply use the items function call to pass the key value base so so the function say the whole program is here so we are using uh, yaml uh, import yaml to import the yaml module then we with open so this is how you open some files in python so with open this is the name of the yaml file you wanted to open then i will use the load all function to load this complete uh, yaml file and then since uh, after loading this complete yaml file it becomes a dictionary so it becomes a python dictionary then i can um, uh, use the items uh, function uh, on the dictionary to uh, 
separate uh, key values from that dictionary so what i'm doing is here i'm printing keys and values of the yaml file okay so and this is about uh, reading the yaml files and we can also write the yaml files using the python uh, py yaml module so for converting the python object see the first process is converting the yaml objects into python dictionary the next operation that is writing operation is simply a reverse of uh, the earlier operation which is converting or uh, converting a python dictionary one second so this is exactly the reverse operation that is converting a python dictionary into an yaml format so how do we achieve that uh, we achieve that using the dump function so earlier we uh, used load function to convert yaml to dictionary now we use the dump function to convert dict to yaml okay so this is how we convert python objects like dictionary and then save them as a yaml file okay and also this method will serialize a python object into an yaml stream okay so this is known so what i'm doing here is again I, i'll use the dump uh, as the function to convert an object into an yaml object okay so here users is nothing but it is a simple python dictionary so i'm taking this dictionary and i'm using the dump function to convert that python uh, dictionary object into an yaml stream okay and again uh, we all know that the yaml is nothing but a uh, data type of yaml is nothing but a of type string okay so once you serialize any python object it becomes an yaml stream of uh, data type str which is nothing but a string and then again once you have that uh, uh, object converted as in yaml again you can use the with open um, uh, function call to write that complete uh, output of the yaml dump to a file so here i am writing that complete file to users.yaml file so okay so let's uh, do this programmatically okay so i'm again going back to the vs code here so i'll uh, open python yaml.py file over here so everything that we have uh, seen here is uh, mentioned uh, as the program here i have, I have to use pip install py yaml uh, so install the python uh, yaml module so what i can do is i can simply open the terminal and then i can um, i can open the terminal and then i can run pip install uh, uh py yaml since i've already installed it so there won't be any uh it won't install uh, again for me but uh, you can also use cmd to install it here uh, what it is saying is uh, this dependency is already satisfied because i've already installed it so what i'll do is now here what i am doing is uh, i'll take a small example so i'll take uh, these four I'll make a new file here. The new file is test dot uh, yaml. Okay. Then I'm just copying three key value pairs. Okay. So, so the uh, as we already mentioned, the yaml document starts with three dashes. So I have three dashes over here, and then uh, some key value pairs. So the name here is the key, and uh, Martin here is the value. Similarly, job is the key, and developer as the value, and skill as the key, lad as the value. I'll simply save it. then i will open the python yaml file okay so what i'll do is um, first i'll test the reading part for that what i'm doing is i'm commenting out the writing part so how will i comment out the uh, complete uh, the multi line uh, uh, program is uh, using the three quotes over here this we this won't comment out but this will be taken as a string okay so the python interpreter will not uh, do anything uh, to the instructions inside it because this complete part is being taken as a string so now what i'll do is i'll simply save this file and then i'll click on uh, execute button now if you see the output of the execute button okay uh, i think i have to change the input file since we are using test.yaml so i'm uh, opening the test.yaml and then i'll use load all function to load this yaml file okay and then uh, using the items function i'll uh, read the python dictionary so then again i'll run this uh, click on this run now if you see here so everything is printed in a 
key value fashion so name martin job developer skill elite so if you're still not uh, uh, satisfied that if you're still uh, not sure whether it is printing correctly so what i'll do is so i'll mention um, some st uh, strings over here key equal to key and then um, value equal to value just it is to show whether my program is uh, parsing or it is directly printing what it is being read okay in order to clear that confusion so i have changed uh, slightly changed the uh, print statements and again i'll click on execute now here it is saying name yaml is not defined so where exactly name yaml is not defined okay let's rerun again yeah okay probably i've uh, clicked on a wrong button here here so now if you see key as name the value as martin so key as job value as developer so the same thing here whatever i mentioned here it is being read okay so now this is all about uh, reading an yaml file and then converting into python dictionary now let's move back to the the other part it is uh, the writing in yaml file okay so now for writing the yaml file i don't have to you know read it so what i'll do i'll again i'll comment it out using three quotes so the three quotes starting and closing over here this complete part becomes a string so that means that um, all the instructions the python instructions will not be executed inside okay so now here i have here is a users uh, uh, users list so now this becomes a list okay so if i click on uh, right click and if i click on uh format document yeah let's leave that so this is nothing but a list okay so if i have to put it on uh, two different li uh, lines just to show you clearly what exactly it is so it is nothing but a list because it is a list of dictionary so the first part is a dictionary because it has name as the key value name and value so this part is a dictionary and again this part is a dictionary so so it is enclosed both these uh, dictionaries are enclosed inside a list so this becomes a list of dictionaries so i'm just reading a list of uh, dictionaries okay and then uh, if you see the type okay so this is a class of uh, dictionary right it is obvious so let's say that um, i i take one more So here what I'll uh, do is uh, instead of list of dictionaries, I'll simply take a dictionary. Okay, so user one is a dictionary, but users are a list of dictionaries. So what I'll do is I'll print both. So I'll print both of uh, uh, the type of users as well as type of uh, just a user one. So this should become a dictionary of class dict. So we'll verify it in the terminal. Okay, so after verification, what I'm doing is I wanted to convert these Python dictionaries into YAML streams. So for that, I'll use YAML.dump function. Okay, so now after dumping, so what I'm doing is I'm also ch checking the type of that dump so the the output that comes from yaml dot dump function call so i just wanted to check the type so the type is as we seen in the presentations it is a type string okay so we'll verify that as well then after dumping what i'll do is so i wanted to store them inside a file so using with open and the name i wanted to use is us dot yaml and then or what is the data that I wanted to store is this yaml dot dump of users data I wanted to store it okay so this is the example so again I'll click on play button over here now if you see here the first print statement uh, of type users so we already know users is nothing but a list of dictionaries so it won't say that it is a list of dictionaries it will only identify the top level data type that is a list so that's why the first print statement is a list but the second users dot underscore zero one it is nothing but a dictionary so that's why your the print statement of type user one indicated it is a dictionary and then uh, once you dump it once you convert uh, the this dictionary into a python stream using a dump function it becomes like this okay so it is a list of dictionary so yaml uh, this is the indication of a yaml 
okay so this is a python dictionary object but this is yaml so you can see clearly the difference so the dictionary is being shown in the uh, braces but inside the yaml it is a key value pair so there are no commas no quotations for keys etc and then if you want to see the type of that uh, dump function output it is a string and then if you see so i wanted to store this complete output in a users.yaml and if you observe carefully over here there is a new file created over here it's okay so what i'll do is i'll just delete it and again i'll rerun the program then you can see that okay users is not defined what happened okay i have to save it okay so then if you see here there is a user.yaml file automatically created and this is the output so why this output came is what i am printing i am printing sorry i am storing this value over here so if i have to compare both this so this is a python dictionary right and this is the output which is stored so if i have to convert this python dictionary manually into an yaml object what i can do is so this is a list so what i can do is i can simply mention list elements like this okay i'll remove the square brackets and this indicates the list element okay so this is how i convert but i should not put quotes and commas right so that's why first i'll remove the comma okay then these are key value pairs so the key value pairs are to be mentioned like this okay so i'll remove the braces so these should be mentioned on separate lines so this becomes again a dictionary so similarly i'll do the same for the other dictionary as well but uh, in py uh, in yaml we don't have to put the quotes here so i'll remove the quotes on the keys because keys are always strings and then uh, a here in the values of type strings also i don't have to put quotes okay so the same thing that we got here it, this is the same thing that is stored so this is how you manually convert uh, json uh, or the python dictionary into yaml and the same thing you can programmatically achieve that using the dump function okay so this is uh, how you use pyyaml module for converting or for reading or writing the yaml files so now let's uh, get back to uh, the different data types supported in yaml now let's start with the comments in yaml so comments in yaml start with an uh, hash, uh, hash sign okay so they can be in line or they can be put on a separate line so they are ignored by yaml passes let's say that uh, you are using this yaml file uh, and a python program reads it so the python program uh, so they are nothing but the these are parsers so these parsers will sim simply ignore uh, the lines starting with uh, hash so they will consider them to be a comment because comments are usually given to uh, give a documentation or the information about what that particular key value does okay so, uh, in the example shown here if service is the key and the httpd as the value so here i have mentioned inside the uh, with hash this is nothing but the name of the service okay so this name of the service with hash as the uh, beginning will becomes a comment so these are known as inline comments because within the same line on the same line i have given the comment here similarly for the next key value pair also i have given the comment in the same line and uh, on the top here at the uh, root level of the document again there is a comment so this becomes a comment on a separate line so this becomes a comment on the separate line even this will be ignored by the yaml passes so here i can simply give the information about this complete yaml document why i am using it what is it, its purpose etc okay now booleans so booleans yaml also support boolean as a data type so we all know that uh, boolean data type has only two values either uh, it can be zero or one it can be false or true or it can be no or yes it can be um, uh, off or on so these are all indications of only two values so these are nothing but the digitals right uh, these are the digital signals so digital signals will have only zeros and ones there are only two states right so either it can be a no state or it can be a state or it can be high state it can be a low state okay so similarly boolean indicates uh, a value that uh, indicates uh, 
it can only have two possible values so here inside yaml uh, i can uh, use either true uh, with capital t true with small t on yes all indicates boolean value of true okay i can use true on yes all indicates all all will be passed as true okay similarly false false of no indicates boolean false okay so i can use uh, you know capital false uh, small for f false off with capital o small uh, uh, off with small o okay no with capital n no with small n all indicates the same thing which is false okay so here the actual boolean uh, values uh, for true and false are uh, true with capital t and false with capital false uh, with capital f but you don't have to use uh, these exact values you can use on you can use of yes no everything will be supported so in order to show it uh, again programmatically what i'll do is uh, i'll uh, read an yaml file okay and i'll print the key value paste okay so i'll remove this extra string because this is not uh, i don't want this and i'm commenting out the uh, the writing part because i don't want uh, to write anything i just wanted to read okay so what i'm doing is i'll take the simple test.yaml file again because so this is what i'm reading in the python yaml okay so what i'll do is i'll take uh, uh so uh, what we are uh, doing we are uh, yeah so i'll take the booleans okay i'll simply paste this complete yaml document here so having three iphones at the beginning uh, i mean it is not mandatory we can put it or we can simply ignore it it is entirely up to us so what i'm doing is here i'm writing a comment top level comment so this is a example uh, for boolean uh, data type okay so this is a comment again um, i'm writing a few more comments randomly so this is uh, this indicates active okay some random comments and the next one this is a for eligible so i'll write comment uh, this indicates eligibility okay so these are the comments uh, so once i read this yaml file using any programming languages right uh, like python go so these comments are to be ignored okay and also this uh, foo variable here which is nothing but the key has the value true similarly this bar here has false so this device one has on device two has off so if you see here these are actual booleans but uh, i have given other possibilities like on off yes no etc so uh, let's see how our actual yaml parses like the python programs or go programs will actually parse them how uh, they parse them how this on is taken uh, converted or uh, how this off is converted into actual uh, boolean we, we are going to see so again i will go back to this same python yaml and then i will click on run button here so if you simply observe the values or the output of the python program you can see that uh, i will just open the test.yaml okay for easy comparison so now uh, foo here is true so it is read as it is bar as false it is read as it is now device one as on if you see here it is read as true because on indicates it is true now off indicates it is false so it is read as false okay so this is how yaml uh, the uh, boolean can have multiple forms of uh, true values true and false values and also if you see here i have comments uh, there are three comments in this yaml document but none of them are read because inside my python uh, program i'm just reading the key values okay so key values indicate this is the key and this is a value but none of uh, these comments are printed by python because these are obviously ignored so this is how we read uh, the booleans so now let's go back to the other data type which uh, which is nothing but the numbers in yaml so yaml support uh, integers floats and exponential numbers as the numbers 
okay so we can have integers floats or exponentials uh, as the numbers it also supports the numeric systems uh, like decimal or octal or hexadecimal systems okay uh, and the uh, we can also give infinity numbers and uh, not in numbers all are supported in yaml so that means that uh, when we talk about integers we can put as 10 11 or uh, 9 something floats indicates 9.9993.14 uh, for pi values and exponential values we can put uh, 1.414 e plus 10 that means that uh, 1.414 into 10 and whatever value that goes as the power that means that okay let me change the color so let's say that uh, i have 414 e okay uh, e plus 3 that means that 1.414 into 10 power 3 okay so this is about exponential part so i can have something known as decimal numbers okay so start from 0 to 9 uh, 10 11 12 uh, these things and the octal values so i can have the octal values so the octals have to be indicated uh, starting uh, with 0 that means that if i have to indicate 12 or if i have to indicate 7 it should be 0 7 so we have the number systems like octal systems hexadecimal systems binary systems decimal systems so these are can also be mentioned in the yaml and for the hexadecimal systems uh, we should have it is 0x so 0x uh, as the starting value indicates that it is a hexadecimal system and we can also have infinity in the form of inf for positive infinity minus inf for negative infinity and for uh, not a number we can have nan value so even for this what we will do we will simply go back to our um, you know python file and then um, i'll delete off the complete uh, first example then what i'll do i'll uh, take the basic data types file okay so this basic data types file i have okay uh, so here so let's forget about these strings for a while okay so don't for uh, don't uh, remember uh, don't consider about these strings so let's uh, concentrate on the numbers part so i have integer 99 float 99 point uh, 887 exponential I have uh, so again I mentioned integer octal so here octal uh, how did I know this is an octal see here guys this octal doesn't indicate it's an octal number so it is a simple uh, naming convention I used I could use X also but since uh, this value has zero on the starting that means that this is an octal so just for naming convention i'm using octal integer hexa but these are nothing but the keys these keys can take uh, any string values now hexadecimal it should have zero x at the beginning and one two three as the value but uh, what is the actual value of one two three we are going to see how the yaml parses read that value and the not a number it is simply used with uh, nan or dot nan okay uh, so yeah it should be with a dot nn infinity it is dot inf okay negative infinity it is high uh, minus dot inf okay and uh, there are uh, you know some couple of strings uh, which we are going to see later so what i'll do is i'll uh, take this complete path and then i'll copy into test.yaml file okay because here i'm uh, in the python yaml i'm just reading the test.yaml file if you don't want to do this so you sim directly you can read this basic data types file by simply changing the name here basic underscore data types dot yaml file then i'll click on this uh, execute symbol so now this execute symbol should give me the values so now if you see the basic data type so integer um, yeah so what is the first one here okay so what happens here is if there are uh, any keys that are repeated right see here this this is an integer key which is already repeated at the beginning okay so it will take the latest value so that's why integer 99 is not printed in the terminal so in order to avoid this what i'll do is uh, i'll uh, separate different yaml files using three hyphens so this is an yaml it is a separate yaml document so this is a separate yaml document so this we have not come across uh, till now this is the last part in this uh, tutorial but uh, for time being just uh, understand that whenever you have uh, three uh, hyphens uh, in between the yaml file so this part becomes one yaml document and this part will become another yaml document so the parsers will uh, take that these are two separate yaml files but 
or both of them are mentioned in a single document so now if i go back to my python yaml file and if i just execute it so this time yaml parser uh, should read both the uh, files so now uh, this 99 is coming over here okay so this is a separate part so this 99 here it is printed as 99 and the float value here it is also printed same way but here the exponential value as we already said it is nothing but uh, 1.414 multiplied by 10 to the power of 3 so that's why this whole part okay it is 10 power 3 so this whole part is given here okay this whole part is given as 1414 okay so this is 1414 dot because this complete part is evaluated and then coming to the other thing uh, integer 1 to 3 is mentioned and here octal 0 1 to 3 indicates it is nothing but 83 value okay so if you are not sure you can uh, just open the calculator uh, i think uh, you should go to the scientific calculator of windows okay then not scientific yeah programmers calculator then what you do is uh, so for octal 0 1 2 3 and if you see the uh, octal part okay one second guys so 0 1 2 3 I think I have to click on this octal here then I have to give 0 1 2 3 then here so you can see the decimal value is 83 that is what it is shown and the hexadecimal of 0 into 1 2 3 so what i can do is i can select the hexadecimal value uh, input here hexadecimal input then i'll use uh, 1 2 3 the decimal value it is showing as 291 here so the 299 one is being converted and shown here and simply not a number it is dot nan so but the python program will read it as nan so inside the python it is nan not capital nan and uh, whether it is an infinity positive or uh, uh, you know if you put a dot inf it will be read as inf only okay so this is how the python programs will read okay so whatever you uh, the uh, put here but the, those will be analyzed and they will be converted accordingly so the hexadecimal of 1 2 3 is converted as a decimal 291 in the python program the next data type is of uh, string so strings in yaml can be represented without uh, without quotes uh, it is entirely up to us so even uh, we had seen that uh, so if the name has the key so what we are doing is we are putting uh, the value as simple the value without any quotes so either you can put uh, double quotes or you can ignore them so yaml will take them as strings okay but escape characters are evaluated only when strings are encoded in double quotes let's say that um, you know i wanted to have vikram and the in the next line i wanted to print uh, my first name okay some first name okay then what i'll do is uh, uh, i'll use slash n for the new line character and then uh, i'll use k k as my initial okay so if i write like this without any uh, quotes so this won't be evaluated that means that it will be printed as vikram slash and k because these new line characters or the escape sequences will not be evaluated when double quotes are not there if you put double quotes okay so this slash n will be evaluated as new line character then the output will become vikram in the next line it will become k without uh, double quotes slash n will be treated as a individual characters like slash will be treated as a character and will be treated as character they are not treated as escape sequences so in order to best prove this so i have uh, an example ready so here what i have given here is uh, so in the string one it is hello there this is vikram and it is devops so this is without any quotes so this will be printed on a single line if i run this python uh, yaml file if i just import this python file and if i just read the key value paste it will be printed in a single line but now i wanted to uh, have this i teach uh, devops on a different line so how do i do that uh, so it is so how do i do that uh, it is uh, after this end i'll put slash n so that means that this indicates a new line character okay but see here this complete thing is not enclosed in a in a, in double quotes so and the next line it is similar to the uh, 
above line but it is double coated so now once you double code you can also see the the change in color of slash n okay so now this complete uh, part the second part even if it is having slash n it won't be taken as a new line character because it is not enclosed in a enclosed in double quotes now if you run the import the same file and if you just click on run and if you try to see the output okay one second guys if basic data types is not defined how I so we have this file yeah okay I didn't uh, save it guys so see here in the second line hello do, uh, there this is Vikram and so see here slash n is being taken as individual character slash is taken as a character and n is taken as a character okay so this is not evaluated as a, a new line escape sequence okay but in the next uh, in the string 3 so I've enclosed this complete statement in double quotes now here hello there this is Vikram and this one is evaluated as a new line character and then the next one is printed in the new line so this is how you escape uh, if you uh, if you want uh, to the uh, yaml to consider the escape sequences you simply put the or uh, enclose the complete part in the double quotes okay now this is fine uh, okay let's say uh, since this is occupying uh, a little bit of space this is completely fine let's say that i have uh, uh, you know a line so that is uh, very big okay let's say uh, i have a line which is uh, having almost 200 plus characters and simply i cannot put it on a single line okay so i cannot put uh, put uh, it, it on a single line okay but i wanted to mention it in the yaml file okay so how do i do that okay so how do i do that it is using multi-line strings okay now going to the other part so we have multi-line strings okay so yaml supports multi multi-line strings okay as a value using the following characters you can use the fold as the character using greater than symbol or you can use block character which is nothing but a pipe so there is a difference between uh, both both these okay so this is this is the key right so here i can uh, have this as the key colon okay and uh, the whole value i can put it here since this is a very uh, huge line so i decided to break it and put it into three different lines so how do yaml know that this is a multi-line string so it is using either this character or this character this is a fold character this is a block character once if you're doing this as the block uh, this fold character so this one will be evaluated as a single line that means that this is vikram and after that uh, and i work as devops engineer so everything will be printed on a single line but if you are using this pipe character so these new lines will be preserved that means that this complete thing will be printed as it is that means that after vikram so this uh, this part will be printed on a next line this will be printed on a next line okay but here everything will be printed on a single line okay so even once you render this yaml file using python you can see that the output okay the first part output is this is vikram and i work as devops engineer and in the next part here you can see that the new lines are preserved but one one of the disadvantages of using uh, these uh, multi-line characters uh, or the uh, characters are they'll put a empty line or the white spaces after each output okay there is a way for uh, you know deleting these white spaces it is simply putting hyphen okay after that character so you should not put fold or the block character and some space and hyphen no so they have to be side by side okay they have to be like this okay so once you do this okay so after printing this key value pair okay so there won't be any white spaces or new lines okay they will be printed without any if you go back to the other uh, the previous one you can see that there is a new line printed okay so we'll just see uh, a brief demo of this and why this is uh, needed in the real life okay how we are going to see this in the real life so for this what i'm doing is uh, i am just deleting the test.yaml contents then i'll go to all uh, data type section then uh, i have a perfect example for this okay so i'll take uh, these two okay so having 
okay three uh, hyphens it is up to you okay i have this test dot uh, yaml file so i have one key okay so this key it is entirely up to you guys it is name name one anything but uh, for easy of understanding i have given this a string with fold and string with pipe so this fold indicates this fold character this pipe indicates this pipe character the first time what i'll do i'll just remove these hyphens okay and then let's see the output okay in python yaml so i'll read that test.yml uh, file okay so i'm just saving this file and then i'll uh, run this okay so now once i run it i'll get the output now if i just go back to the test.yml for comparison the first thing is with fold okay so this is the multi-line string right so if i don't want multi-line string how do i uh, first write this guys so let's do this first string uh, just string okay i just want to give string and then um, i'll put it in a single line okay so for single line i'll uh, just put this uh, you guys know it already okay since i don't want to uh, put this on a single line okay because for here this is uh, easy okay this is only occupying a bit of space but uh, if this line spans across you know for multiple characters then this becomes an issue so then that's the reason why i'm putting it on multi line so if you see the output of the first one with fold so these are these uh, new lines are there right here these are not preserved so that means that uh, the string with fold is printed in a on a single line okay and also you should uh, know here that there is a white space created so this is the white space okay but there is no white space here after the string dot fold immediately there is one more key value pair but there is no white space okay and after this string with pipe here so this multi line uh, uh, string has new lines here right so these new lines are also preserved okay using pipe so and also if you see here after this also there is a white space now let's do the same thing here by putting the hyphen okay i'll save this file and again i'll run this python yaml file okay now if you see here string with fold it has printed again there is no white spaces or new lines and after that also okay there is no white lines okay so that is how you can uh, completely eliminate the white spaces or the new lines okay using hyphen okay so that is about uh, the multi-line strings okay so we'll go back to one of the examples uh, where exactly we use these multi-lines so i have here a config map okay so this config map is from kubernetes uh, manifest okay so this is one of the object in kubernetes similar to pods daemon chains or services deployments so, so config map is one uh, one such uh, object in kubernetes here i wanted to have a configuration file called uh, my.cnf okay and that my.cnf will have a configuration okay if i have to paste this configuration like this okay okay so this is the configuration that i need to uh, give it as a file to a pod okay let's say instead of pod to a container so how do i give that using okay so these are this is a complete file right it has uh, you know uh, different values on different lines okay so how do i do this so this is a multi line string let's say this is a multi line string so that's why what i am doing is i am giving it using a pipe character and this complete thing is rendered as it is if i have to give this as a block character okay sorry the fold character it will be printed on a single line that is my sql after this on the same line pid file will come but this is not the requirement okay so this is the requirement so this is the config file from the uh, kubernetes so here i have a use case of having multi-line strings okay now coming uh, going to the next thing so it is dictionaries so we already seen what are dictionaries so dictionaries are nothing but the key value base so we have the key and we have the value so the value can be a integer it can be a string or it can be a multi-line string it can be a list or the value can itself be another dictionary okay so if i have to go back to uh, you know 
uh, this test.yaml file so let's say the name as the uh, key and i can have vikram as the uh, value so this is a key value pair and then i can just give the age okay so this is this complete thing is a dictionary it is called as a map okay uh, this can also be called as a map now here i have uh, a string as a value here i have the integer as a value now i can have the address as a key but the value instead of uh, putting on a single line here the complete address what i can do is i can have again okay door 26 okay area something okay next um, state i can have any other thing i can have uh, country so i can give it like this right instead of putting everything uh, on a single line so i can have uh, ad address as the key and the value itself is again a dictionary this complete part is a dictionary again if you take this as a dictionary again this is a key this is a value this is a key this is a value this is a key this is a value okay now here uh, next skills if i have to take skills as the key i can have values a list of values okay instead of skills what i'll do i'll just do certifications okay so certifications i can have multiple certifications right so multiple certifications uh, i can have i can just give it as a list like cka this is a list okay ccad uh, this is a, a one more element of that list then i can have uh, dca uh, you know docker certified professional uh, associate i think so dca it is a, a list so i can have these list elements without any uh, white spaces this is also fine i can also put two white spaces to indicate a block this is also fine okay uh, but if i have to do it with keyboard shortcut so i have to select this inside the vs code i can just simply press ctrl shift and the right uh, sorry it is ctrl one second guys i think it is ctrl shift and uh, or uh, okay it is not working okay forget about it okay so this is uh, how you give it as a list okay or, or else what i can do is uh, i can give again a dictionary okay cert okay or else i can just give it as a key value cert 01 ck cert 02 again it is a key value list of key value pairs okay cert 03 okay so this is complete thing is itself is a dictionary so the name key value is the vikram next address is the key this complete thing is a value this complete value it itself is a dictionary then certifications are the key these are the uh, list of dictionaries so if i have to you know read it in yaml okay then if i have to compare it with the actual input okay you can see here the name as this is as this address so address over here it is a dictionary right this is a dictionary so that's why we have curly braces here so door area state these are key value pairs inside a dictionary now coming to the certifications it is a list of dictionaries okay so that's why a list that's why square brackets again inside it is a dictionary so here there are individual dictionaries so this is a dictionary this is a dictionary this is a dictionary and it is inside a list so list of dictionaries so if i remove uh, these key value pairs and if i simply put a list okay then if i try to run the same python yaml file so the output will be different now so again it is a simple list of values list of strings okay so again uh, this is a dictionary and uh, these are the possible uh, values for that dictionary okay even uh, if you want to practice it so inside the all data types so there are uh, numerous examples okay for each of the uh, you know the concepts that we practice uh, so that uh, each of the concepts we are seeing in this video okay so this is all about dictionaries now uh, what about null okay let's say that um, i don't have anything to be mentioned as a value so it is a null value so the null values are indicated with the tilde or null literal without any quotes you should not quote this null otherwise it will be taken as a string so you have to put null as the value or you can use tilde so once you run this file using python or if uh, any yaml parsers are reading this file they will be read as none 
capital N O N E. So this is related to Python. So it could be uh, for some other language, it could be N I L. Okay. So once you pass it uh, right then only you can see the value for python it is it will take as none for some other language it maybe it will take it as nil so it is uh, for the parsers to decide what should be the outcome okay so in order to do this again what i'm doing is so uh, i'm putting name okay i'll just use tilde symbol is i'll put it as 26 address what i'll put it as null okay remember here that i am not putting inside a quotes if you put inside the course it will become a string so null indicates a non, null value okay if i have to read this uh, using python and see the output now see here this uh, tilde will be evaluated as none this null also will be evaluated as none okay so this is how you do it for the null so null indicates these are null values or no values okay now coming to the list so list we have already seen what is a list okay so list are nothing but uh, it's an array so list in yaml supports both scalar values like integers floats or you know exponential values or complex types like dictionaries and mappings okay so if i have to you know uh, uh, show you the example of a list okay i'll go to the uh, all data types yaml then um, i have many examples for the list so i'll uh, simply take uh, this complete part okay and then i'll copy into test.yaml okay so that is easier for me to explain so now list uh, if you see the second part this is a list okay so list 2 it's the key and values are 4 5 6 so how do i indicate uh, these are 4 5 6 are list elements so it is through hyphen value so do i have to put two spaces here so it is absolutely not needed so if you are putting spaces so that will be considered if you are not putting it is still fine but it is uh, usually best practice to give two spaces to indicate so these are the values that belongs to this key okay so if you are not putting uh, spaces uh, it might confuse but uh, it is still fine okay so, but I can also indicate list inline so these are called inline lists these are called block level indications these are called inline indications okay so you can also give like this inside these square brackets I can mention the values or else I can mention them in the uh, individual lines using hyphen okay here I am using scalars that means that integers and floats okay I can also use the uh, combinations of uh, integers you know strings etc that is also completely fine so uh, now what happens is uh, say here this list has the key and these are the values right now i can also have list i mean some key and values i can have see here this is the first list element okay but what is the first list element again this is a dictionary so this is the list second list element but what is the value it is a key value pair and the next one again it is a key value pair so it is it doesn't mean that uh, list should uh, have the values only as a list i can also have list of dictionaries as well okay so so what is the use case okay let's say that um, you have a pod okay inside the kubernetes uh, you know uh, kubernetes we have uh, multi uh, port containers okay a container can have multiple ports so how do you mention multiple ports of a container it is through list okay so you list all the ports that a container listens on so that is a use case even in the kubernetes service files see here this part is it is a uh, a block of p uh, a block of yaml taken from the kubernetes services okay so here see here spec service spec type as the node port okay ports now if you see here ports as the key the values are list okay that means that this is a port 80 it is listening i mean and again port 443 it is again one more port it is listening on okay now uh, if i remove this right okay if i remove this that means that this is a list okay if i put them back okay this complete part is a list this complete part is a list okay but if i put hyphen okay one second if i put hyphen here 
this is a list element this is a list element this is a list element but uh, this complete part is a list element okay so if i want this as a list element so simply put hyphen okay but uh, that is not my requirement right okay so here this complete part is a list element because hyphen is starting here but uh, next hyphen is starting here that means that this complete part becomes a list element but this what is this again it is a dictionary because it has a key value it has a key value so this complete part is a again a dictionary okay so now now we understood right the uh, hyphen indicates it is a list element so this complete part is a list element here this is a list element this is a list element this is a list element now if i have to read this using python okay so it will be very uh, easy to understand now the first one is list 1 1 2 3 okay so 1 2 3 as an output now list 2 4 5 6 it is mentioned like in this format so it is 4 5 6 okay so do you have to give spaces here it, it is not mandatory but uh, if you give so that will be easier to read now list 3 it is 1 2 3 strings so this is given 1 2 3 strings inside the quotes sorry inside the square brackets now here spec spec is the key and the complete part is a value that means spec is the key the complete part is the value okay till the next part now inside this complete value type is the key value is a node port so type is the key value as the node port now ports as the key and uh, it values is a list of three elements so here ports is the key value is the list of three elements so this is the list so the starting of square bracket and ending of square bracket indicates it is a list so inside the list again it is a dictionary key value key value so that's why if you see here port and name it's a key value key value key value and then it complete thing is enclosed here in the braces okay so this completes this part again next one this okay third one i don't have port information so that's why it is a null value so it is evaluated as none okay so this is how you read list in okay python so now uh, uh, we were talking about block versus flow style so there are two forms of uh, indicating list or uh, you know any data type in yaml so first one is the block style so block style uses spaces for structuring the document let's say here so here color as the key value is a list okay so i can list the elements like this inside the square brackets like i can go red uh, yellow uh, blue but i can also mention it uh, like this with the spaces uh, at the uh, front okay so block style so this is a block so block style uses spaces for structuring the document it is much easier to read but less compact because uh, this will span uh, this will occupy a lot of space so it is easier to read but it will uh, take a lot of space and less compact in case of flow style so these are called inline way of structuring the document that means that if uh, color is a list so i can have the elements of the list mentioned on the same line okay it is uh, you know it takes less space but it is uh, you know somewhat uh, less easy to read okay because uh, you know giving it on a separate line makes it easier to read giving it on a single line makes it little bit of uh, difficult to read so here for list we are giving it as square brackets the same thing uh, if it is in uh, dictionary data is the key and this complete thing becomes a value again this inside this value again this is a dictionary right because it has a key value key value okay so this is again a block level way of doing but what is the other way flow level way so since this is the data is the key value is a dictionary okay i can have braces to indicate a dictionary okay now individually there are key values so name as the key value as the this one is as the key value as this so for uh, you know list elements we use square brackets this we already know for the dictionaries we use braces okay so this is uh, a block a block way of doing it and this is the flow way of doing it flow style okay now the next thing is set so set in yaml uh, is, uh, is uh, almost similar to python uh, data type uh, uh, set data type 
okay so how do we mention uh, uh, sets in yaml list so instead of uh, hyphen for list we should have a question mark to indicate a set, a set element and also the set elements after the name of the set element we have to use this convention that is double exclamation marks followed by the set as the key okay so one of the important uh, you know features of the set is uh, it will not allow duplicate elements let's say if this is in your yaml file so i have the uh, there are two duplicate values two two and again there are duplicate uh, names vikram vikram so once your python program will parse this data so these duplicate elements will be removed so only one value will be retained and the other duplicate value will be uh, remote so if i have to show it programmatically so what i can do is i can just uh, uh, i can have a name as uh, you know uh, vikram okay so what i can do is uh, and then uh, so inside the certifications key what i'll do is so i'll have a list right okay list of uh, ck and then i have ck ad so and then i have uh, dca okay sorry so this certifications what i want to do is i wanted to mention it as a set so exclamation double exclamation and set so instead of uh, you know the hyphen i have question mark okay so question mark indicate the set element so so what i did is uh, so i mentioned ck twice okay so now what I'll do is I gave this as uh, an input to my Python file. So now if you see the Python file, okay, if I just uh, show you the output. So now if you see here, so I mentioned CK twice, but it is not there in the, once my Python program reads that YAML file, see it completely ignored the double value CK. So only one CK element is there okay so here set uh, the double braces indicates set okay so you have to see that uh, there is a difference between dictionary uh, versus set right so both dictionary and set are uh, indicated uh, in the flower braces but the thing is the dictionaries will have key value pairs. the name uh, let's say uh, name uh, colon uh, vikram uh, again comma age okay so some age but here here it will have only values let's say ck okay ck ad so this will have only values so there are there is no concept of keys over here so both although both will have the same flower basis to enclose the data the dictionary will have key values but the set will have only the values so that is the indication okay don't think that uh, this is enclosed in braces this becomes a dictionary since there are no key value format so this is a set okay now come going back to the next uh, data type uh, it is anchors and extensions so why we use anchors and extensions uh, okay so these anchors and extensions uh, uh, we use it in many places like in docker compose files you know uh in ansible also we use so what is the use of uh, anchors and extensions is yeah yaml anchors are a feature which let you identify an item and then reference it elsewhere in your file let's say i have a dictionary okay in the yaml file i wanted to refer this dictionary multiple areas in multiple areas let's say you know um, i have a dictionary that uh, i wanted to put it in five places in the same yaml file so instead of copy and copying and pasting the same uh, you know dictionary multiple areas what i can do is i can use anchors feature where i'll mark a particular key value or a particular uh, information in the yaml file with the uh, ampersand sign okay with a name okay and then i can refer that name using star okay it is simply like marking an anchor see if you see here here restart colon always okay so if i just remove this end restart policy value it is simply restart colon always so i wanted to use this key value restart as a key uh, always as a value multiple areas so what I'm doing is for this restart colon, I am giving it a name restart policy and then I'm anchoring it with ampersand. Okay. So now what I'll do is I'll use this restart colon always key value somewhere by just giving that 
star and then name that means that so this always value is there right i am marking this value okay so anchors are always for the values guys okay so this always value i wanted to refer it many places okay that's why i'm using i'm giving it an alias name called restart policy and then i'm creating an anchor using ampersand then i'll uh, use this always value here at this position by referring to this alias name and then using star and the other scenario i have an environment okay so just don't consider about this for timing i have an environment as the key value is a dictionary so i wanted to have this dictionary used multiple areas that means that app is equal to web service environment is equal to production uh, both these key values i wanted to use multiple area that's why for this environment okay for this complete uh, environment i'm giving nvars as the name and i'm using an anchor okay then i wanted to refer this complete thing somewhere using that alias name followed by the star okay so let's go back to uh, you know the uh, example and see how do we use anchors okay so this uh, we are taking the real life uh, scenario where i have uh, okay one second yeah, uh, yeah so i have a docker compose file okay so this docker compose file we already know so docker compose is for uh, you know uh, bring up a complete application stack like uh, we have multiple containers to be run as a part of you know your application in docker then i instead of running docker run command multiple times so i can mention all those containers information in the docker compose file and uh, simply i can use docker compose up to bring the complete application stack so those uh, containers or uh, you know those uh, containers are known as services so here i have two services wordpress as a service and mysql as a service then i have the restart policy as always okay for this wordpress container i wanted to use the same restart as always here the always as the value for uh, multiple uh, such uh, services so what i'll do is this always value i am creating an alias name and i am using ampersand to mark the anchor okay similarly this uh, app uh, web service and environment production this value so these belong to environment key so this complete uh, thing is in a uh, dictionary so uh, for timing just ignore this uh, anchors so environment as a key and uh, app web service and uh, env production as the values so this complete value i wanted to refer it in multiple places that's why so for this complete dictionary object i am giving n vars as the name and ampersand as the anchor so now in the another service i can have the same restart policy as always instead of hard coding it here uh, like here i am just using this restart policy as the alias name and using star star is the variable replacement okay so why i have done this let's say that uh, let's say this uh, always i wanted to change it on failure okay so now i wanted to have this on fa failure uh, as the restart policy to be reflected everywhere for all the services so if i don't use anchors what i have to do is the same on restart uh, failure i have to copy it here okay if there are hundreds of services mentioned as a part of docker compose so i either have to search and replace or i have to manually replace so in, in order to avoid that what i can do i can use anchors okay similarly this environment uh, value i wanted to have it for the mysql service so same i've created an anchor and then i've used uh, the anchor here so now what i'll do is i'll simply use python program again uh, to render it so now if you see here the output uh, for the services okay wordpress restart as always okay so if you see here these anchors and all are ignored so these are not printed so the restart as always for wordpress service that is obvious and then environment we have app and uh, env so for the environment i have the app and env but if you go to the mysql here image is this one okay and restart i have not mentioned anything here it is directly taken from here this value so that's why here for the mysql restart as always it is taking from the anchor and environment here if you see here i have not mentioned anything it is taking from the wordpress service anchor okay this app and env so this app and env are mentioned as the environment okay so this is all about using anchors so to uh, to have the variables 
okay so it is reusing different values given in the yaml okay but here if you see here i'm using environment as env voice so whatever present here i'm just copying it here but after copying can i also add uh, my uh, extra environment variables or extra information okay because it will only copy okay but what if i wanted to copy the uh, some part from uh, the other available uh, anchor but also i wanted to add my own set of values so this is about extensions so what happens is inside extensions it will extend the anchor values that means that in uh, apart from copying the already existing anchor values we can also add some additional bit of information let's say i wanted to uh, have restart policy uh, sorry so here i have app web service environment protection here i wanted to have one more uh, key value known as type uh, colon database okay i wanted to have this so what uh, how i can do is i can still use this one but here i'll use like this okay so what i'll do is i'll just uh, copy paste from here okay so it is already given in the uh, one second guys it is also given in the all data uh, type file so you don't have to note down note down now okay so what happens here is environment what i'm doing is here this is the extension operator okay using two less than symbols okay and what i'm doing here is i am taking the environment variables from the anchor and i also am adding few more environment variables here okay so now if you see here so this extra tag here will be rendered okay if i have run the same uh, if i take the input of that yaml file here if you see the environment for the wordpress is only app and env but for the mysql it is app env and also the type of type called database okay which is extended Okay. if you don't extend it right okay simply if i'm doing like this i'm not uh, adding anything if i if you run it okay so what happens see, it is nothing it is same as the previous example okay it is anchor okay even though we have uh, used an extension operator but we are not extending any value okay so this is about uh, you know anchors and extensions okay and the other thing is the placeholders so what happens is what if we have been doing is we have been hard coding everything uh, in the yaml file so let's say if you wanted to hard code the name we are doing it uh, we are hard coding the uh, environment variables we are hard coding the age everything but what uh, uh, what is my requirement is i wanted to have a placeholder or a variable that uh, that is to be dynamically replaced but yaml uh, by default doesn't support it so it supports placeholders okay so yaml placeholders are used for uh, referencing variables inside the yaml files so okay so if you see the so one of the requirement uh, you know one uh, one of the uh, example or one of the technology which uses these placeholders is helm charts okay so uh, we will not talk more about the helm charts okay uh, in this uh, lecture series but uh, helm charge, uh, charts use something known as templating yamls so that means that we the yamls doesn't have uh, hard coded values so those will have placeholders where yam uh, helm will dynamically replace the values let's say uh, this is the kubernetes uh, deployment file okay so if you are already know kubernetes we know that deployment will uh, deploy a certain uh, number of uh, containers or the pods in the cluster let's say uh, inside the replica section i wanted to have uh, 10 replicas or 20 replicas but i don't want to hard code the number of replicas i need i wanted to dynamically uh, read it from a another yaml file okay so that's why we have something known as placeholders so the placeholders uh, will look like this so there are two braces at the beginning and two braces at the end and uh, in the uh, in between we'll mention the placeholder name so the placeholder name can be uh, replica uh, anything okay so from where uh, these values will be replaced is these values will be replaced from some other file okay in helm chart these are replaced from values.yaml file okay so these values.yaml file will have a, a dictionary 
okay or it's an yaml file so what i mentioned here is i mentioned some hard coded values here okay so i have image nginx tag as latest pull policy replicas container pod so let's say uh, i wanted to deploy it in the dev environment okay so inside the dev environment i wanted to have only one replica then what i'll do is i'll change the replica as one and then i'll deploy use this deployment file to deploy then what happens is this deployment file uh, has replicas value that is being read from this values.yaml file okay so this values.yaml file has only one uh, as a value then immediately it will deploy only one replica let's say i wanted to deploy the same uh, application in the production environment but this time i want a 12 replica or three replicas let's say so now i'll change this values.yaml file to three then i'll use the same deployment file to deploy but this time the replicas will re will uh, that are going to deploy are three because inside values.yaml file so i have mentioned as three so if you see here the same deployment file i'm reusing for various environments okay so without uh, making any changes to the uh, deployment file but the values.yaml file I can configure for the various environments okay so this is known as this way of mentioning uh, the placeholders and also I can have uh, different images and the different tags pull policy container ports so all these are placeholders so these are known as templating so this templating uh, uh, of yaml files are uh, is done in helm okay helm uses this uh, this templating okay so, okay so now yaml placeholders are used for referencing variables avoids hard coded values so this is the only advantage that we get okay and helm uses these placeholders for templating yaml files okay the why uh, helm is so popular is we have templates okay so we don't have to hard code we can uh, change the values in some other files and refer these files in some other files okay we can refer them in some other files okay so the helm uses go templating engine okay so this templating engine is written in go language so yaml reads these templates all the placeholders and all and the go templating engine will replace the values which are present in values.yaml okay and then the final uh, yaml will be rendered okay so we'll see how this is uh, going to work so i have here uh, in the resources section okay a helm template file so inside the helm template so so knowing the structure is of uh, you know is not of concern for this tutorial so we have the templates directory where the template values templatized yamls will be stored and outside this uh, chart we have uh, chart.yaml and values.yaml if you look at the values.yaml file these are hard coded values if you go to the templates and see deployment yaml okay this is nothing but a deployment file but uh, values are not hard coded okay so let me open this values.yaml in the another section okay now if you see here instead of uh, hard coding the replica size uh, two or three or something what i did is okay i'm reading it from the okay i'll just remove the extra part okay i'm reading it from the values.yaml file so uh, how do you refer them is uh, there is a uh, you know a specific way of referring them so it is using dot values that means that it i'm saying uh, the first dot indicates go to the root of the directory and find a file known as values and then fetch a value replicas from that file okay so it is dot values it will go to the uh, values.yaml file at the root of the directory and then it will check for the replicas key and fetch its value so here replicas key it is mentioned as 2 so if i mention it as 9 so while rendering the chart the helm chart so it will fetch this value and also here uh, the container image what i am doing is i am reading the image dot name so inside image there is a separate key known as image okay now again for the tag also i am mentioning image dot tag so from the values go to image tag and then go to the actual tag so image key and the tag key so it is latest so this complete part uh, will become nginx okay there is a colon here and then tag which is latest okay so now here ports container port what i am asking is to fetch the container port from the values.yaml file and then go to ports key and then fetch the container key port key so the ports as the key and again container port as the key 
and its value is 80 so this will be replaced so 80 will be replaced here so dot values dot image dot name what is it is it is the nginx from the values dot yaml and again this complete part is it tag which is latest which is here and then the replicas are 9 okay so but instead of hard coding what i did is i have just uh, gave it these values okay so now how do we render this chart okay so we have been saying that uh, you know these are uh, helm uh, the template templating yamls okay so uh, can i render them so before installing this chart can i see the actual variables that will be replaced yes absolutely it is uh, um, you know possible what i can do is uh, here uh, one second guys if i do ls okay i'll just select the bash profile okay so if i do ls so here this is a helm chart so what i can do is i can just do helm template and the name of the uh, template it is helm underscore template that is this folder name so i could also uh, give it a different name but uh, i'm giving it a name as helm underscore template okay so don't mention uh, don't can get confused with helm space template so helms helm template it is the command and helm template it is the folder name okay so now if i just enter here so all the template files will be rendered now this placeholder slide like this file is dot uh, replicas if you see here it is nine because i actually have nine here it is rendered so if i just put it as five okay and then save that file then again do the rendering again so now here replicas as five so you can see the final uh, yaml file after rendering so using the helm template okay so if there are any other templating engines so they'll have their own set of uh, you know the commands uh, to render the charts so now coming to the the other uh, you know the part in the yaml series it is the multiple files so i can have uh, uh, multiple files defined uh, in the same yaml document okay by separating the, those files with the okay three uh, hyphens over here so this part becomes one more yaml document and this part will become one more yaml document so the yaml parses will uh, you know you know uh, can identify or recognize uh, these two are as the different yaml documents with the help of three uh, hyphens so it is possible to have different yaml uh, uh, documents uh, like uh, i can have i can club pod uh, yaml file i can have service yaml file you know i can have config map uh, yaml all defined in a single file or, or else i can have them in a different yaml file so uh, i there, there are two possibilities okay so now uh, coming to the the k8 examples uh, uh, that we generally come across in yaml is uh, so let's say uh, we can uh, use uh, since uh, all the kubernetes manifest files or the object files are written in yaml so let's see if one such example for multipod uh, uh, yaml example so here api version is the key and the v1 as the value kind as the key metadata as the key and the value is a key value pair okay so for metadata as the key this becomes a value but if you uh, look into this value again it is a key value pair now this spec as the key restart policy is never as the key value pair and then inside the values so this is a list okay so these are nothing but list of volumes so the volumes can have uh, we can have multiple volumes right in the kubernetes so that's why we have volumes as the list so i can have multiple volumes defined even in the containers so a pod can have multiple containers so there is a multi container pattern inside kubernetes so i can have multiple containers in a pod uh, but uh, having single container uh, per pod is the ideal use case okay but i can also have different multiple container patterns like ambassador patterns sidecar patterns in init container patterns or adapter container patterns where we'll have multiple containers per pod so that's the reason why the containers uh, are indicated with uh, the values are uh, indicated with hyphen that means that uh, it is a list so i can have list of containers or list of volumes okay and then uh, inside each uh, list again this is a dictionary right okay so the name image volume mounts now a container can have multiple volume mounts so that's why volume mounts is again a list now next container container name image volume mounts. it can have multiple volume mounts for that container okay so even in the config map that we have seen earlier so this is a multi-line string 
okay so even uh, the config maps are also can be mounted as volumes inside a, a kubernetes pod so that's why so the configurations can also mounted inside the pod as a volume okay so these are the references that i have used you know for this lecture so i've used uh, ml.org official documentation so i've taken some example from uh, kubernetes and the ansible documentation if you like this video please join our uh, facebook community and uh, subscribe to our youtube channel so these are the links and qr codes uh, to our facebook group and youtube channel and uh, thank you guys thank you for uh, attending the uh, session and uh, thank you for uh, watching this video so if you have any queries you can just reach me out on facebook uh, on the link given. Thank you.